Hi everyone, thanks for checking out my video. This is something I've been looking forward to. It's a conversation I had with my good buddy, Jesse Harden. He's a pastor in town and uh, he has a lot of important things to say. I think there are things that we need to hear in the season that we find ourselves in. You know, it was a challenging conversation for me in a number of ways, um, challenging and thought provoking. We talk about, some about, we talk about this kind of individual identity versus corporate identity. Uh, we talk about quite a bit about the fear that I think so many people are experiencing right now of doing the wrong thing and saying the wrong thing that results in us just remaining silent. So that's something that I have been guilty of in the past and I'm trying to get better at. So anyways, it's a great conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. Here's me and my buddy Brad talking with Jesse Harden. Love you. Uh, Jesse, thanks so much hey. for uh, talking, brother. We, we really love you. Um, I want to say that that you, for the last few years, have been someone that I have really looked up to mm. in ministry. Um, we became friends through racquetball, actually. Yes. And um, I just feel like you're someone that, for me, God uh, brought into my life in his effort to form me. Mm. And... Uh, turn me into the man that I'm supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so I was just so eager to um, talk to you about some of the things that I've been processing and some of the things that are going on in the world. And I just wanna say this, that like, to have a conversation on a video uh, does not solve right. anything, right? It mm -hmm. certainly doesn't solve racial injustice. So right. we're not trying to, we're not solving it here. Right. Um, and we're not trying to just check a box. Like, okay, well, so glad that we've talked about that. Now we can move on to more important things. Right. That's not it. The, the heart here that I'm hoping to have is just to learn um, what God would maybe be saying to me as a person, but us as a community, us as faith leaders, us as a nation, us as a world. Right. Um, and so I, I just feel like you have the ability to come from a place because of the context of your ministry and who God has made you, that I think that you can really speak into my life. So I'm just really yeah. uh, grateful. And I know that awesome. it's a little bit funny, right? In this first video to be three white, evangelical yeah, we know it. pastor <laughs> men talking about racial injustice. So I appreciate the comedy in that, you know, yeah. so so none of us are experts, uh, mm -hmm. certainly, but um, I hope that you can just hear and, and that everyone can take part in just the heart of wanting to learn and wanting to grow and wanting yeah. to be better. For me, I've, I've understood the problem, uh, at least I think I have, uh, in historically. I've mm -hmm. understood, you know, racism is, like I've said, from the pulpit multiple times race if you're a racist you're an idiot you know that that's <laughs> mm -hmm. like for me it was just simple five years ago racism was so i felt like i understood it right. you know it was this um just discriminating in someone's heart based on somebody's race right mm -hmm. right but but now i'm learning that there's there's um more nuance to the conversation you know and there's mm -hmm. other things that i hadn't considered that now yeah. i'm thinking well that was that's one way but but the concept of racism can appear in lots of different places too, you know, and 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 ways that um, we're we're complicit or we're um, blind to even our own culture mm -hmm. and the things that feel really normal to us and how they can feel really different from other people. Yeah, um, what I'm learning, and you guys, uh, I'll speak for myself. Yeah, to be a racist is an idiot, and I'm an idiot. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that I need to own. Uh, the ways that have been formed and shaped by racism and by mm -hmm. racism in this country yeah. and by our history and by my experience and by mm -hmm. the conscious and unconscious messages I've taken in as yeah. a white person growing up in America, yeah. which includes not only being anti-racist, what we see externally outside of ourselves, but to be ruthlessly committed to like extracting any bit of racism that exists in us mm -hmm. and the ways that we participate in it. And part of that um, is this posture of confession mm -hmm. and acknowledging that um, being willing to acknowledge where I do cling to racist, prejudice, discrimination, mm -hmm. uh, discriminatory ideas, and to confess that and to be honest with it. People are talking about more than just inner heart change, mm -hmm. right? They're also talking about things that need to change in the world, right? In the systems that we have, in um, all of that, you know? So, so when you guys think of like, man, what is, 
we see some problems, mm -hmm. right? And I'm so grateful, like the, the prophets of the day have come to shine lights on, and I think that's great, yeah. you know? And mm -hmm. I'm so grateful that like, we're even having the conversations, right? And we're just trying to, you know, we're talking about it for some of us for the first time, right? yeah. just because it's never really like hit us right in the gut like it is mm -hmm. now, you know? Um, that, that I think to, to accurately understand the problem is such a wonderful thing. And then for me, I come to this place of like, okay, so then what do we do about it? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like where does solution then come from? Um, maybe it's not our job to come up with the solutions. Mm -hmm. it's, a very, um, uh, it's a very white male uh, <laughs> thing to do to say, well, how do we fix it? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And then, That's and good. then yeah. you know, yeah. so uh, maybe we're not the ones to come up with that. Yeah. And this is where it's hard for us. And this is where repentance, part of repentance and confession is to follow um, people mm. of color into their solutions. Um, because I think oh. it includes, we have to take, we have to uh, let go of control and say, because mm. we want to control the, cons the, the, whatever the solution is of the mess that we created right mm -hmm. right and that keeps us in the driver's seat and in power and jesus flips these power dynamics and says um jesus himself philippians 2 right he didn't count equality with god as something to be grasped clung to you know mm -hmm. hung on to but he emptied himself becoming a taking the form of a servant yeah and so i think yeah. our role is not to fix uh, the problems that um we have been a part of creating but to um, take the back seat and let someone else drive yeah. um, and follow and use our gifts in support of the solutions that yeah. they create. Does and isn't, that make it, sense? Isn't, it, yeah. uh, isn't it so like, like me to right. suggest like, okay, so then how do we fix it? Right. I'm a fixer in right. my marriage also, if, yeah, you, if you didn't too, know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when there's a problem, right. luckily I'm here to right. fix it. Yeah. And so yeah, like that, that in this solution, it's, or in this situation, it's not like, as easy as here's the problem, here's your solution, one, two, three, four, or whatever. But maybe at least in this season that we find ourselves in, and tell me if I'm understanding this right, mm -hmm. that as we're working to um, elevate, right, and, and hear voices that we have maybe snuffed out, right, or we mm -hmm. haven't listened to, or we've turned the volume down on, mm -hmm. as we're doing that, what we can be doing now instead of inventing cool new solutions is to just be be um in our own hearts and in our own lives just continually um developing this posture of confession and learning right where, where we're wanting to learn we're wanting to grow and with that we have to kind of lay down um our own egos yeah mm -hmm. you know and our own the you, you know, it's so, I don't know why, it's just maybe like to change feels shameful. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that to, to say that I need to grow just feels weird. Yeah. And so for so many people, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's the, that's the conceit of being a pastor, right? Is you have to lovingly say, hey, we love you, you're wrong, do this instead. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's pray, you yeah. know what I mean? Like we are, we are communicating to bring life change right. um, into people. And so, yeah, just that uh, the posture maybe being as important, tell me if I'm hearing this right, the posture of learning and believing um, is maybe as important in this season as coming up with clever solutions. Yes, mm -hmm. but I also think we don't, I don't want us to, um, be deceived that this means inaction though. Learning and repenting and internal work is very important, um, but uh, I think we automatically equate action with taking the lead. And what I'm mm. saying is we do mm. need to take action, but it's in our following mm. um, the, the, the community that understands the oppression yeah. um, and understands the dynamics. Does that make sense? Yes. So like I've just read a quote, um, I think it's from a, like a Papua New Guinea tribe, but they have a saying that says, you don't truly believe something until it lives in your muscle. So um, you can believe, well, well, you don't believe something unless it moves you to action. Mm. Um, and the problem with the way that we think uh, is that action means leading and coming up with solutions. We, yeah. um, but part of yeah. this is the act of humility is to follow. And that's what you, to be an ally or to be an advocate, 
is to like let someone else lead and come alongside. Yeah. But it still involves involves our body and our moving against evil. Mm-hmm. Does it make sense? Yes. Yeah. 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 And, well, you go. Sorry. Mm-hmm. And, an, and another thought just off of uh, a lot of what um, I'm hearing, and I wonder if we would even have some thoughts, is also, well, I didn't own slaves. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't right. directly contribute mm-hmm. to what's happening in the world. Well, I didn't do this. Um, I have a thought, but I want to hear what are your, when you hear something like that, what's something that comes up in your heart yeah. um, or in your spirit? Yeah. Well, what comes to my mind is more of a, like a theological uh, thought, and that is the book of Psalms, um, and all the, which is a third lament, lamenting, um, and also includes confession, and a lot of the uh, prayers of repentance in Deuteronomy, they are all corporate confessions. Mm-hmm. And so it's a, a mm-hmm. unique value in our moment in the Western world uh, that we are so individualistically minded, um, and so that, that's why we have a hard time to make the switch uh, into corporate confession. If I didn't specifically pull the trigger or do something wrong, then I have nothing to apologize for. Right. But biblically, the biblical framework is uh, much more holistic and communal. Yeah. And so we bear, as the na- we bear the name of Jesus Christ. We are the body of Christ. And so if, you know, uh, one part of the body did something to inflict harm, even if it was in the past, uh, I mm-hmm. own that, repent for it, and move forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think we have to recapture more of a collective uh, identity as the people of God mm-hmm. and acknowledge individualism as something that prevents us from moving forward. That's my thought. Yeah. That's a really, I think it's a really... Um, I love you. Yeah. I think it's a really challenging um, concept, you know, and for me, yeah. still trying to learn what that is, because yeah, like the the idea of a corporate um, repentance, right? Um, in a way, and then and then I also feel like um, that I kind of come up against something in my own heart, which is like, I don't know, shame, mm-hmm. right? And um, like the ass- the um, assigning of shame yeah. to maybe someone who um, ought not to feel shame, right? Yeah. And so yeah. maybe that maybe it's because I'm conflating to repent for that means I ought to feel shame for right. it. You know mm. what I mean? Because it's like, and is, is that uh, a distinction there? You mm. know what I mean? Because right. if you're talking about something that happened, um, the dark ages of Christianity, right? right? We would kill people if right. they would not convert, convert. Right. right? And so for me to repent of that, yes. Mm-hmm. But I'm not, sure, I'm not sure if I feel shame for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I feel remorse for it. I don't know. Have you guys yeah. thought about that? Well, yeah. yeah, and as the community body of Christ, the holistic body of Christ, um, the act of repentance is continual as the body, which is to turn mm-hmm. away from those sins. Yeah. So our continued repentance as the body of Christ is to continue to turn away from vi- systems of violence and oppression yeah. that would s- seep their way into the body. Right. Um, and like Jesus, no, there's no uh, condemnation right. in his love and, and repentance leads us to freedom and to right. second life. Um, so to the shame question, I think you can allow it to give you as much shame as you want to. Mm-hmm. But my question would be for a believer, um, and maybe a challenging one is, do we believe that Jesus died for it or not? <laughs> Um, right like right. as hard as that maybe is sure. um, for for the people who need grace that's really good to hear yeah it's really yeah. good for me to hear right. that yeah. jesus died for that yeah um but i think giving ourselves that grace because it, gi- it gives the second chance a start mm-hmm. uh, and that's what makes jesus so beautiful the father and the the friend of the second chance right right um so the 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 holistic we turn we made those mistakes the crusades killing people for not converting bad we won't do that again and we (laughs) we continue the repentance that act as the whole body of christ just the way i understand it by continuing to not kill people (laughs) if they say they don't want to be believers we continue that process by honoring the experience of our black brothers and sisters 
people of color, indigenous, all of that. Uh, we, we continue to do that, uh, yeah. and that's how we continue in that act of repentance. Right. And then as for, as for the shame, believing that the blood of Jesus mm-hmm. and he covers all things, and through him we can come into new life through repentance and confession. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he provides a way forward for the black man, and he provides a way forward, thank God for the white man. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and yeah. it, it is a mul- multicultural, mostly ec- ethnic body of Christ, the most multicultural and ethnic body in the entire world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's unifying, and it's not shameful, it's beautiful, mm-hmm. and it's something that Jesus wants. Yeah, right, that's good. right. Yep. Yeah, and, and an opportunity to um, celebrate like a new chance, yeah. right? You know, it, for me, as I'm thinking through all of this stuff, and I, I wonder if, you know, other people have to be like this, but I, I, I feel inclined to believe that, and this is how it's been for me, I'm mm-hmm. assuming it's how it is for other people, but as I have followed on this journey towards um, the path of Jesus, right? I, um, as I've done that, I've just become more and more, my heart has continued to turn towards using some of my energy, some of my um, whatever, my, my power in the world, to use some of that for, um, oppressed and less fortunate people. Mm -hmm. I just think that that is something that usually, if not always, comes with following Jesus. Mm -hmm. That at some point, there is gonna be something on the inside of you that wants to reach out to the less fortunate. Mm -hmm. I just think that is the way of Christ. So this is a, it's a complicated thing because the impulse to help is good. Um, uh, But uh, I would say it, it dovetails with this conversation. That if we want to help, and it is a, a, a godly impulse to serve and uh, to uh, leverage our resources for people who don't have as much, I think we need to be, again, aware who's in the driver's seat and who's, mm-hmm. um, because the tendency mm-hmm. uh, is to prescribe solutions to people's problems and say, I will help you in this way without asking any kinds of questions, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So. I mean, we just uh, witnessed someone going to labor, right? Before this interview. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> That's not a joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that woman was in need, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we were in a position to help. But um, it would be crazy if we just like run in there and she's in labor, her water's broken, she's over there, and, and, and just say, well, what you need is like an ice cream cone because you're really hot, you know? So right, like, here, right. here, I'm gonna help you yeah, with yeah, this, yeah. but that's not what she needed. She yeah, didn't need that. Right. And so what we need to do is, again, take the um, posture of a learner and a yeah. servant mm. and say, you tell me what you need yeah. and not mm. assume that I have the solutions to your problems. Yeah. Um, mm. There's a Cambodian proverb that says like, only a spider can fix their own web. Um, a lot of times mm. uh, we uh, think- How do you come up with, how do you- it's really, uh, it's really cool. Cambodians came over there. Uh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's a, you know a lot of our posture here, even in the, in the neighborhood that we're in. The, this community um, gets a lot of people coming in mm. to help because they feel bad, and a lot of it is to assuage guilt and shame. Mm. Um, and so we want to make ourselves feel better about. Um, all the crap, all the bad stuff in the crap world. Is fine, <laughs> crap is fun. It's crap. So we have to be aware of that, right? We yeah. have to be aware of that our, our coming alongside people isn't about us and making ourselves feel better, but it's yeah. legitimately about mm-hmm. coming alongside. And in order for that to happen, we need to listen and learn and take our cues from the people who are experiencing the problem, also recognizing that they have solutions. Mm-hmm. Maybe yeah. just have some of the resources yeah. to carry them forward. Right. Yeah. Does that make sense? And yes. A good way to recognize and defeat savior complex yeah. is to know that you yourself need a savior too. Yeah. And that's mm. what makes Jesus so important. Oh, yeah. um, so it's it moves from help to servitude. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. James and John approach Jesus, how can we be sad at your left and your right? And he says, become a slave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's his response. The least among you will be the greatest. Yeah. Um, so for us as believers, one, I think we're transformed by the understanding of our necessity for a savior. That's yeah. like the, uh, that's the first part of yeah. Christianity is our necessity for a savior. Yeah. Um, and when you realize that you need a savior, <laughs> 
more, more. Mm. Paul says, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jesus came to save sinners of whom I'm, I'm the worst. worst. Yeah, right, yeah. Um, and you need it more. Right. Um, it's less about how can I help you? It's more about Jesus has helped me mm -hmm. and I need to show you Jesus. And yeah. that the motivation mm -hmm. changes. Yeah. Um, so for, for those of us wanting to maybe feeling the nuances and the complications, yeah, right, like, right. well, how do I, well, I just trying to help. I feel like it's savior complex. Right. There's all these words being mm -hmm. thrown around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Recognize and hu pursue humility. Yeah. We right. need a savior. Yeah. We do. Yeah. And yeah. maybe exercise patience too. Yes. Some of that yeah. stuff kind of pans out and, and and the voices that need to come forward we'll, we'll believe and we can pray that those voices do come yes mm -hmm. you know but to, to exercise some patience um versus like i don't get it you know right. what i mean yeah. I, I spent four minutes trying to get it and right. i don't get it right. so mm -hmm. it must be hokum yeah. but to have some patience while things um maybe become more clear yeah. right and some of those paths forward from the right people um show show themselves yeah. mm -hmm. um that we just won't, that we don't grow um, weary yeah. in the ambiguity yeah. and, and some of the, because that's what it's been for me, yes. where it's yes. been frustrating because I'm such a logical dude. I process yeah. the world through my brain. Right. Mm -hmm. um, it's just who, what, who I am. Yeah. And so sometimes I'm trying to learn stuff and I'm just like, I don't get it. Yeah, but I don't understand that point, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and to just not short circuit that process yeah. in my own heart, yeah. you know, and that I would give the Holy Spirit space yeah. to yeah. come in and challenge me. Cause I just think, man, the moment you go defensive, mm -hmm. you lose your ability to be taught. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you're just, at that point you dug your heels in and mm -hmm. you're just putting your hands up. But yeah. instead it's like, man, I, you know, I don't agree with this person. I don't agree all the way with anybody. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I don't even agree with my own wife on everything. You know what yeah. I mean? That's n That will never happen. But to not just be focusing on who are my allies here, who are my enemies here mm -hmm. in these conversations, but to just give ourselves to what the Spirit would say um, in a, in a um, non-polarized uh, way to where we'll just be open to, to learning and growing. I just think it's so hard for so yeah. many people. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. And I think even as I, you know, talk about the the complexities of everything, like that can lead to paralysis. And that's kind of what you're talking about. Yeah. Like, we're afraid to mess up. We're afraid to say the wrong thing. We're afraid to help someone in the wrong way. Right. And so that gets really, that's really hard. Yeah. So I think two things, like one is we need to acknowledge that it is really hard and we shouldn't expect love is simple, but it's not easy. Right. Mm. It's not, right, well, right. that's the right word. Love, love, requires you know paul prays let our love abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you would approve what is excellent yeah. and be pure mm. and blameless so yeah, love yeah. requires discernment yeah. and i think we yeah, think yeah, yeah. well if it's real love it should be really easy or it should be like not complicated and i think it is complicated so i think we do need to embrace the complexity uh -huh. like of all the stuff you know 400 years of american history um that's a lot of baggage yeah and we gotta sort through it and, <laughs> and, so, yeah. Yeah. and so we do have to be willing to do the hard work mm -hmm. and like persevere in continuing to do the hard work of learning mm -hmm. but also we have to move in the freedom of forgiveness and grace yeah that jesus we are, we do have permission mm -hmm. to fail and what i hear you asked you started the interview with like what or the conversation with uh what are you learning from your uh, black and brown brothers and sisters one thing I'm learning from uh, one of uh, the women in our church is like, she has ta taught me, Jesse, don't be afraid to fail. Mm. If you are advocating and, uh, and your posture is one of love and advocacy for the people on the margins, for people that look like me, you're not gonna get it right. Yeah. But don't let the fear of not getting it right prevent you from doing anything at all. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. so I think we need, and that's another value that we have I think as people, as white American people, is that we're taught uh, to fear failure and we're taught that we have to get it right. Yeah, right, um, right. So I think mm -hmm. we need to live into some of that um, willingness to fail, but at the same time, willingness to like um, embrace the complexity of it, you know? Mm -hmm. if that yeah. makes sense. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. But the silence is more hurtful yeah. than our failures yeah. in our attempt. Yes. Yeah. And again, that comes back to the posture of confession. Mm. Like move forward, say something, be, and you might yeah. say it wrong. And so then say, confess that, 
yeah. and move forward. And, yeah. you know, it's a process. Uh, transformation is yeah. confession, repentance, confession, mm -hmm. repentance. This is what we're about. One thing I think that we're experiencing is kind of that paralysis mm. by a lot of faith leaders. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? I mean, I, I personally know pastors in, in other ministries where it's just, you're just scared to death to do the wrong thing. Like you don't stand for the right thing. You did, you know, you did this and oh my God, you said, yeah. you said African American and you right. didn't say, you know, right. and it's just so scary and it's so hard because you feel like I'm just going to talk and I'm just going to make it worse. Yeah. You know, yeah. and so I think what, what we have seen is, um, and hopefully we can help rectify is people who, um, might otherwise say something, just afraid of saying the wrong thing, so they don't say anything. Yeah. You know, and so I think it's a word for the faith leaders of the day that have the right heart and have the courage to say something. And we'll all say it wrong, and we'll all do the wrong thing, and we'll, you know, all of that. But that that's not that's not an excuse to remain silent. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, I wonder for for you, Jesse, just as we close, if uh, you would pray for us. Sure. And I'm hoping that you would pray, um, of course, for us as faith leaders, but maybe more in particular, just the hearts of um, of all of us as as we're entering into this new season, that the, that the Spirit would come and move um, and do His work uh, in His time. Yes. Yeah, let's do that. Lord, I thank you, God, for this moment, this moment of uh, disorientation, this moment of... Uh, chaos that brings us uh, this beautiful gift uh, of self-examination, examination of ourselves, examinations of our churches, examinations of our lives and our mentalities and postures. God, you are so good to meet us right where we really are. You are always present and at work, and you're always leading us into the ways of love. Yeah. So Jesus, would you uh, enable us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Mm -hmm. Would you enable us to love with discernment mm -hmm. and yes. with wisdom and with mm -hmm. skill? Would you help us, enable us to love without fear, that your love would cast out the fear of messing up, the fear mm -hmm. of missteps, mm -hmm. uh, the fear of silence, the fear of misunderstanding. God, would you lead us into love, lead us into uh, a repentance yeah. and a, a, into a long obedience in the same direction mm -hmm. of, of mm -hmm. love and humility and grace. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being kind and good to us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.